Next to me in the studio, I have the CEO of Scandinavian Real Heart, Mrs. Ina Laura Perkins. How do you do, Ina Laura? Good, thank you. So what is your overall impression of the first quarter in 2023? Well, it's been going really well. So we are definitely on track towards our clinical studies. Mm -hmm. Uh, in January, you start off by communicating increased survival in your in vivo study uh, from one to four days. Uh, and also uh, that server performance cr criteria were in increased. Uh, all this was reached in the end of 22, but you communicated it in 23 uh, after collec uh, collection of data, including analysis. And the ma main criteria were uh, no hemolysis, uh, no thromboembolic events, high pumping capacity and good right-left balance uh, and a short procedure. And you state in the CEO note to the report that you are now on track towards obtaining approval for the first in-human use. So what are the criteria for uh, in-human use? Well, so to get to the clinic, we have three data packages that we need to complete towards the regulatory authorities. And the in vivo studies is one of these. So what we have to show here, and we've been discussing this as one of the physicians that, has, that says that he would be happy to support us to do the clinical trial. But what he wants to see is no hemolysis, so that is a certain type of blood damage, no thromboembolic events, so that sort of means blood clots that would form and then travel to other organs and also the uh, parallel which is a second data package reliability study so this is the mechanical durability of the device so it, the third one is to do the in vitro hemolysis testing so the in vitro blood damage and for this we need to compare ourselves to a clinical device and so we've been doing our studies against the syncardia and what we can see now with an earlier prototype of the device is that it has less than half of the blood damage in our tests so overall we are on track and it's looking really good so it's just basically doing more of the same now to get towards this the first in human study yeah and, and you aim to start that in 2024 yes yeah, so that's our aim of course that means that our preclinical studies need to continue to go well and in parallel our fundraising also needs to go well. Exactly. Uh, in January you also communicated that you together with KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden, uh, you set up your first uh, patient simulator. Can you tell us about this? Yes, yeah, so we have been using patient simulators, or they're actually called hybrid simulators in the past, to help us really develop and uh, refine our automatic control. So the automatic control of the device, it senses how much blood is coming into the device and how much blood the body needs so that it's controlling this uh, automatically. And we have tested this in a hybrid simulator, patient simulator abroad, but we want to do more tests and we also want to get second opinions on our tests. So it's good for us to have more testing opportunities available and also locally now in Sweden. And this was also partly financed uh, through Vinova, right? Yes, so it's, uh, it's a strategic program called the Smarta Elektronik and it's by Vinova uh, Formas and Energimyndigheten. And during the quarter you also communicated uh, two new members of your medical advisory board, uh, Dr. Ulf Schellmann uh, and uh, Dr. Bart Mainz. Uh, Dr. Shellman also announced CMO uh, later on in the quarter. Can you yes. tell us about this? We're very happy for this. So um, the person who has founded Real Heart is a medical doctor, uh, Dr. Azad Najjar, and he's had this role previously of the chief medical officer, but he's also been the one that's the innovator helping to build a patent portfolio. So he's been a little bit spread out and it's really good for us to now get a cardiothoracic surgeon who has so much experience as Ulf Schellmann has both internationally and within Sweden. He was the first uh, doctor to implant an artificial heart in Scandinavia in 2008 and he's got uh, experience from all really big um, heart pumps, heart assist systems that are available and have been. Um, so he's now taken over as chief medical officer which means that Azad still stays with the company but now he's the the chief innovation officer focusing on developing more and new innovations and building our patent portfolio. Mm -hmm. And what can you tell us of Professor Bart Mayens? So Professor Mainz, he is very famous, uh, a key opinion leader within this field of MCS. He has 
a great experience as a heart transplant surgeon, as an MCS surgeon, so that's mechanical circulatory circulatory support, so that's heart pumps. And uh, he has also been the uh, president of several international organizations, so scientific organizations within this field, and he is just an excellent surgeon. So you're building a very strong team here now. Yes, and this is what's needed because now we're needing to develop our first in human clinical trial protocol and communicate with the notified body and the FDA. So we need to uh, strengthen ourselves on the clinical side. And I think we have really done that now within the first quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, to go to the finance, you, you executed a, uh, the, uh, the outcome of uh, warrants of a series T01. Uh, how much did this bring into the company? So approximately four million crowns and uh, in combination with being able to find ways to reduce costs a bit further, now we've stretched our uh, run time. So uh, before we communicated that we had enough funding to go through Q2, but now we can get into Q3. Yes, and what is uh, your plans uh, going forward financially? So we continuously um, market ourselves to investors and now also focusing a lot more on international investors as being a EIC company this is expected of us so for example we were at the Swiss Nordic bio and we've noticed which is really exciting much more interest from the institutional medtech investors within this field so that's an important uh, thing going forward to continue to communicate actively with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to strengthen this you also uh, released uh, after the period uh, a market update. What can you tell us about this? Yes, this is interesting. So a lot of activity within the field of artificial organs lately. And uh, for example, there's been uh, within the last month investments globally of about $30 million in this field. And now we can see that we have probably underestimated the market potential. So our uh, European competitor have uh, announced that there is about 200,000 patients in the EU and the US combined that are in need of an artificial heart. But even this seems to be an underestimate because um, Professor Jan Schmitto, who's a cardiothoracic surgeon in Hannover, one of the biggest uh, heart pump clinics or heart failure clinics, um, has uh, said that only in Germany there is a need for 60,000 artificial hearts. And our US competitor has said that only in the US there is a need for 300,000 artificial hearts per year. So the, uh, the market potential really is uh, not in any way limited by the number of patients in need of a new heart. And that is per year, you say? Yes. <laughs> so that's a lot. So what markets is the most uh, interesting for you? Is it a combination of Europe and North America or what is it? Yes, those are the biggest ones. And uh, we uh, feel really strongly for going towards Europe as a first and foremost. And that's why we're engaging with uh, clinicians in different countries in Europe and have already received interest from Italy, Germany, Belgium to do our first in human in one of these countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, you presented uh, at the Swiss Nordic Bio Zurich Healthcare uh, Investor Conference. What was your message uh, uh, over there? So the general message is that you know heart failure is a massive health problem and clinicians they need more and better artificial hearts and what we offer is one that can really mimic the human natural heart with the aim then to reduce complications. Hmm. So, and how was it received? It was received with great interest and uh, the interest was much more compared to last year. So, this is, uh, I feel like there is a trend now. I've worked within uh, heart pumps for over 10 years and when I started, artificial hearts were not very much noticed. But now there's just more and more interest coming in this field and it could be also because patients are speaking up. So, heart transplant patients, they are now speaking up about the medication that they have to take to not reject the human heart that they're receiving. And this has lots of complications, including cancer. And uh, we have an interview with a heart failure patient. She's unique she, because she's also a uh, nurse and she treats other heart failure patients. So she really sees it from the inside. And her message really resonated with me. She said that she may need a new heart in the future. And if she was to choose, she would choose an artificial just because she's seeing all of the side effects that a heart transplant comes with. Okay. Uh, after the period, you've also been involved in publishing of three different articles 
Uh, can you tell us about this? Yes. Um, so we have published three. Two are about our computational simulations, so how we're looking at the simulating the blood flow inside the device. And one is about our blood testing. And uh, we're really excited because we, we published a Nature Scientific Reports. It's what, the fifth most cited paper in the world. And uh, the results show that we have a low risk for blood damage with the low shear stress, so that's mechanical stress, and a good washout. And the hemolysis testing we did on porcine blood is really the first set of hemolysis testing that we have done um, with a very early prototype and using pig blood. And we showed that these results were better than the German competitors, both small and large artificial heart. So both very promising results. Uh, pushing ourselves towards the clinic. Okay, so that was all my questions for you today. So good luck with your studies and your financing. Thank you. Looking forward to talking to you in three months. Thanks.